For many years, Starfleet depended on a single ship orbital platform facility for the construction and maintenance of starships. Due to the rapid expansion of the Federation during the late 22nd and early 23rd centuries, the existing platform were unable to keep up with the increased demand. By 2266, Starfleet decided to create a new orbital facility. The requirement was for the space station, which would put all the refinery, processing, manufacturing, and the assembly facility required for the manufacturing and the maintenance of starships into one place. When it was finished in 2278, the station was essentially a small city, dedicated to the starship's production. This enabled Starfleet to eliminate much of the transportation and resources requirement previously involved in Starship's construction. Once it was fully realized that such efficiency savings could be achieved, it was decided to proceed with further stations in other major systems. The industrial-scale replication of the 24th century was a major revolution throughout the Federation and led to many refurbishment and manufacturing industry on space dock. Because of the threat from the Borg and Dominion, our space docks facility has been working at maximum output in order to put as many new ships into the fleet as possible, as well as producing weapons for ground forces and other war materials. Due to its efficiency and high output, these stations continue to form the backbone of the Federation war production capability. Construction of the Starbase 74, the first of the new, larger facility, begun in 2342. The space station had a massive layout that was designed to harbor numerous starships inside its upper, mushroom-shaped section, or the main docking bay. The interior docking bay could be accessed by four pairs of large space doors evenly spaced along the outer hall. At the top of the station was the primary reactor and primary subspace band communication towers, which has the ability to scan all solar space. The docking port became one of the central installations for weather watch, debris scan, radiation analysis, and the starship traffic control. This was made possible by the largest single sensor array and subspace communications equipment. On the outer rim of the main docking bay were several tractor bins and middles, and right below the docking bay was the supply hangar and recreational section. Furthermore, the station retained a powerful deflector shield and about 40 heavy phasers turret for defense. The vast majority of the station living quarters were located in the middle of the station. Further down was the fabrication hangar bay, and finally toward the bottom was the main reactor. The main reactor was where the large matter antimatter reactor was located and it was used to power the entire station. Equipped at the very bottom of the reactor were the planetary communication towers, which was mainly used to communicate to the host planet. The sheer size of these stations were far beyond anything previously envisioned, a factor which weighed heavily on the minds of the design team. Construction of Starbase 74 the first of the new large facility began in 2342. It measured at a height of around 10,700 meters or 6.6 .6 miles, with a diameter of 8,781 meters or 5.4 miles. The space station has a total mass of around 71 million metric tons and can accommodate about 85,000 officers and Starfleet personnel and about 120,000 to 240,000 civilians. I want to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video. If you want to become an expert at quantum mechanics or sharpen your skills on mathematical fundamentals, you have to actively interact with the problem to sharpen your skill, and that is what you can do with Brilliant. Brilliant is a great way to learn complex subject matter with hands-on learning that allows you to manipulate simulation and visual and have you answer questions every step of the way. This is the best way to learn because it allows you to check your understanding, and if you get stuck, there's always helpful hints and full explanation. Another example is this course on computer science where you can uncover the optimal strategy for finding a key in a room. And you will quickly learn how your own strategy can be replicated in a neural network. Brilliant is the best way to learn math, science, and computer science interactively and has thousands of lessons with exclusive new content added monthly. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org forward slash screen 
or click on the link in the description. The first 200 will get 20% off during your annual premium subscription. Now back to the animation. The large mushroom shape layout was primarily designed to house a large internal hangar, which could dock around 8 ships for maintenance and repairs. The interior docking bay could be accessed by 4 pairs of large space doors evenly spaced along the outer hall. Each vessel in and through the outer doors and docking was handled by the dedicated docking control facility. At the center of the internal docking space featured a column-like structure with 4 ports, allowing the starship to dock on either side. Each bay had a cruise facility such as lounges with large windows, offering sweeping views of the space dock's interior. Docking space was allocated on a priority basis with no bias toward planet of origin or race in the event of a Starfleet alert situation. The command and control center was the nexus of all control and communication activities within the space station. The center section was taken up by a 3D holographic master system display surrounded by several officer stations, as well as the command chair. In keeping with traditional layout, the main view screen was located at the front. On the port side was a small briefing room, which also included the head for this deck. In addition, the control center comprised of an office and a ready room adjacent to it, which provided a private area for the commanding officers. The bridge has easy access to and from all important areas of the station, with two tower lifts located on this deck. Inside the recreational module aboard the Federation Station was where the Starfleet personnel could relax when they're off duty. There were various communal areas throughout the station including the amphitheater and soccer stadium that could seat around 3,000 people and situated at the center of the recreational module was the travel core as well as containing a recreational facility such as a swimming pool, picnic area, and playground, the module also contained a number of lakes and ponds that the Starfleet personnel and civilians could enjoy. Right below the recreational module was the water storage tanks and recycling machinery. The vast majority of the station living quarters were located in the middle of the station. As we take a closer look inside the station living quarters, each section has several restaurants, merchant shops, and an open community area near the central circular section. For additional transit to each floor, each section has a dedicated gangway and two turbo elevators. On the outermost section of the ring was the corridor to the living areas. Every crew member on the station were provided with their own quarters. Most of these quarters have two beds, a small bathroom with a shower, a private refresher room, a walk-in closet, and a living room. And located in the middle was the community storage area. Earth Space Dock was probably one of the largest Starfleet space dock structure ever constructed. Other space-built structures might have been larger, but none was ever built as close to the planetary surface. It was originally conceived as a military base for ships repair and refits, and provided the most extensive medical facility with ongoing research being conducted for unsolvable medical mysteries. Each space dock can typically support various spacecraft including 285 workbees and 100 shuttlecraft of various types. So what are your thoughts on space dock? Leave your comment on the section below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.